Greetings. I'm Kent Stevenson, a principal engineer with Rockwell Automation. Welcome to our series of podcasts about model predictive control in the distilled spirits industries. Between 2009 and 2016, the number of distilleries in Kentucky tripled, primarily due to the worldwide growing interest in bourbon whiskey and to an increased appreciation for other premium spirits and craft cocktails. Due to this surge in demand, distillers are searching to identify and adopt technologies and methods that allow them to increase production and improve efficiency. Now, whenever a new technology is introduced into a traditional process, the first concern is that the traditional recipes and qualities will be compromised. As someone once said to me, unless you use that mash bill, that yeast, distilled at these proofs, barreled it at that proof, and age it in those rack houses, you might make some fine bourbon, but it won't be Jim Beam. So these things must be maintained. In this, and in other upcoming podcasts, we will focus on how distillers can use model predictive control to maintain their traditional recipes and qualities, increase production, improve efficiency, while also helping their plant operators focus on higher value tasks. Model predictive control, or MPC, is supervisory control that operates on top of existing regulatory controls. MPC uses a process model to calculate the best set of moves for the process variables that will optimize performance within a given set of constraints. Unlike a single loop controller, which might move a valve to maintain a flow rate, model predictive control looks at the whole process and manipulates multiple variables simultaneously to manage multiple objectives and constraints. MPC also takes into account the interactions in the process and will proactively make adjustments to ensure that a required change in one part of the process doesn't cause an upset in another part. So what would this look like in a distilled spirits plant? Let's look at a process near and dear to my heart, bourbon whiskey. Most of the large bourbon distillers use a continuous column still rather than a batch pot still for producing their whiskey. Distillers beer, or the alcohol-rich fermented grain mixture, is fed continuously to this column still, known as the beer still. Steam is fed to the bottom of the beer still to boil up the alcohol and some of the water. The spent distiller's beer leaves from the bottom of the beer still and is sent to the dry house to be dried, but more on that in a future podcast. The vapor leaving the top of the beer still is condensed, now called low wine. Some of it is returned, it's what's called reflux, to the top of the beer still to manage the temperature and therefore the alcohol concentration of the low wine. This is called low wine proof. The remaining low wine is held in the low wine tank until it is fed to the doubler, which is a continuous pot still and provides one more stage of separation. Steam coils in the doubler provide heat that vaporizes some of this feed, and the vapor from the doubler is condensed as high wine. The rate of steam feed to the coils in the doubler maintain the temperature and the proof of the high wine. The portion of the feed that is not vaporized leaves the doubler as what's called bottoms and is collected for further processing. Some distillers have an additional smaller column still called the heads and tails still that is used to recover alcohol from various streams around the process, such as the bottoms from the doubler. All of these streams are collected in the heads and tails tank, are fed to the heads and tails still with along with steam, enough steam to ensure that all the alcohol is vaporized and none of it leaves with the, with the water leaving the bottom of the heads and tails still. Let's say we want to maximize production in our distillery. We would give an MPC application an objective of increasing the feed to the beer still until it cannot meet some objective or it runs up against some constraint. The main objectives for our process would be the low wine proof and the high wine proof as well as the levels in the low wine tank and the heads and tails tank to avoid running a tank dry or overflowing the tank. What would the possible constraints be? They would be things like the available amount of steam for the beer still, or the amount of cooling water available to the condensers, or potentially the maximum allowable feed to the doubler. They could be from some other part of the plant. They might be the maximum production capacity of the fermentation section, or the maximum capacity of the dry house. Each time our MPC application executes, it uses a process model to look for a solution that allows it to increase the beer feed to the beer still 
while still satisfying all of these other constraints and objectives. To increase the beer feed, it determines what else needs to be adjusted at the beer still. What is the minimum amount of additional steam to be added to ensure that all of the feed is boiled up and no alcohol is lost? How much additional reflux must be added to the top of the still to maintain the low wine proof? Are these changes possible? Will the pressure in the still go too high? Is there enough cooling water for the low wine condenser? Also, what impact will these changes have on the rest of the distillery? How much additional feed will have to go to the doubler to maintain the level in the low wine tank? How much steam must be added to the doubler to maintain the high wine proof? How much additional feed must be sent to the heads and tails still? And how much additional steam to ensure that no alcohol is lost there? And finally, what impact will this have on other parts of the plant? Can the fermentation department supply the additional feed, the additional beer? Can the dry house process the additional spent grain? If all of these and any other objectives and constraints are met, then the beer feed is increased. The other changes are either made or planned for a future time when the beer feed change will affect that part of the distillery. What if one of the objectives is not being met or if one of the constraints is going to be violated? The MPC application would determine the changes required to meet all of the objectives and constraints and implement those. At each execution, our MPC application has manage the traditional recipes and quality objectives by maintaining the low wine proofs and the high wine proofs, maximize production by increasing the feed to the beer still, improve the distillery efficiency by ensuring that no alcohol is lost from the beer still, but yet using the minimum amount of steam required to do so. In addition, MPC has also managed the material balance in the distillery by maintaining the levels in the low wine tank and the heads and tails tank. By doing these things continuously now, MPC frees the operators from mundane tasks, such as adjusting flow rates to manage the tank levels, so that they can focus on higher value tasks, such as using their years of experience to monitor the condition of the process and to, to identify potential production problems. Problems like equipment that needs maintenance. By identifying these potential problems early, they can either help resolve them during production or they can help them be scheduled for the next shutdown thus avoiding lost production due to unscheduled downtime. Distillation is just one of the areas where MPC can increase production and improve efficiency for distilled spirits plants. So I hope you'll join me for our upcoming podcast that will look at other areas where MPC can be applied to make distilled spirits. Thanks for listening.